All right, let's get to some money-saving DIY automotive electrical diagnosing tools uh, and save yourself some money from having to buy the retail versions. First off, load testing. Load testing. Go to the junkyard, get yourself some marker lights. These are little 0.2 amp marker lights. Um, tin the ends with solder and you can use alligator clips to do all kinds of load testing for low amperage draw circuits. And then we can bump it up of course and these are headlight 55-65 watt uh, test or headlight bulbs and all I've done is used hot glue and these are drink bottle plastic guards so that this thing gets hot so that you won't burn your flesh when you pick them up. Once again you can see that the ends are tinned and you can use these for serious high amperage draw load testing. Then I've got intermediate marking lights. Here's another headlight, same idea. This was purloined out of a junkyard and soldered with extra leads, tinned again. And here we have some other marker lights. This one I didn't use, uh, I used safety wire, drilled a little hole on the holder and wired the, uh, the drink, the funnel drink container as the guard. And we've got the same thing here, another plastic guard with a light in it keeps you from burning it when you pick it up. These are so cheap. And the plastic containers, I got off the side of the road when I was out riding my bicycle, so I didn't even pay for the plastic containers. The next thing, when you're doing low amperage current draw testing, um, I use my uh, direct meter, but the problem with using the direct meter is I blow those 500 milliamp fuses in the uh, multimeter when using direct wire current draw tests. And those fuses are kind of expensive, plus they're a pain in the butt to replace often. So I usually like to use the DC amp clamp to do the majority of the load draw, amperage draw testing until I can get down to the one and two, a dozen milliamp range and then I'll go to the direct multimeter. But in the meantime, I like to use the amp clamp. But these cheap amp clamps don't do very well at low amperage. We're talking 100 milliamps or so. Their granularity isn't all that great. So what I did is this is a zip tied together 10 loop wire. And if you plug this in line with the 10 with the tinned wire leads and you put your amp clamp around this you will 10x the amount of amperage that that circuit looks like it's pulling and then you can granularize and use it to debug circuits etc and then I've done the same thing with this one this one is actually using magnet wire and it's got a hundred loops of magnet wire in here and so when I put the amp clamp on this one voila, I get 100x times whatever current's flowing through it. Obviously both are fused accordingly, but it turns the amp clamp into a nice tool for debugging 10 milliamp, a dozen milliamp, or 5 milliamp, etc. Low, these suckers are very handy. These little, these little amps, amp clamp signal boosters, very handy. And all they are is loops of wire. Okay. Then we have the poor man's the poor man's homemade DIY version of a power probe tool. We've got 30 amp battery clips up here. Notice they're heat shrink wrapped to the colors coordinating with what they should be on a 12 volt system. We've got a ground, we've got uh, for green, we've got black, we've got red. All this is is a regular 10 foot extension cord cut in half and then the extension cord end is right here. But on each end of the extension cord after you cut it in half, this end has the battery clamps on it positive, negative, and then if you're doing uh, module testing or sensor testing, you can use this for a 5 volt reference. It's got wiring loom, 
So you can stretch it out to about, I think it's, this is three feet, so we've got wiring loom. Uh, and you can spread these out if you need to for under the engine bay. And also taking the insulation off means you can put an amp clamp around it. But on the other end is where the key is. We're coming by the connection once again. We've got this in the middle. This will become apparent here in a moment. But on this end, I've got the same thing with the wiring loom. About two, two and a half, three feet of wiring loom. But I've got female banana clips. And then alligator clips can plug into this. Voila. And you've got yourself 12 volts to the back of a truck, right from the battery, for doing power probe testing without spending the money on a power probe. Now, this is what makes it fantastic. If you're working with a truck and a trailer, you can now put any extension cord between these two connections and you can have a set of leads that take you power all the way to the back of a long truck and a long trailer by using an extension cord put in the middle there. And there you go. Those are some tools that uh, you can throw together at home when you've got a free afternoon or whatever of nothing to do in the garage and I guarantee you when you sit down to do some electrical systems testing on your automobile it will make your life a lot easier. Bye.